Hey guys, here for another episode of Cobra's Corner, and today we'll be going back to uh, some of my uh, Gundam models, which are some of the earlier ones that I bought when I didn't really know how I was shaving and cutting. Uh, so they're a bit, well, I wouldn't say bad, but they're, they're not as good as the quality that I'm doing them now. Uh, but I am going to go to a very cool one, a very shiny one, one that I, I hold near and dear to my heart, which is the Hayaku Shiki, or Hyaku Shiki. Never really sure on its pronouncement, but it's a very cool uh, model. This is the, uh, the golden version, it's all with gold plastic, uh, kind of like the Lucky Draw Transformers that I have. Uh, unlike the one that comes with the Mega Bazooka, which that one, yeah, it comes with, excuse me, it comes with the Mega Bazooka, which is quite cool, but it doesn't have that Hyaku Shiki feeling, which is a gold plate, and uh, that's why I kind of love it. Uh, so, it, th this I've already made this, so I won't be able to show you it on the tree, but I, I will show you the box and the little leaflet in a bit more detail, so uh, we'll go on to that now then. Okay, so we're back with the the box for the Hyakushiki. Uh, again, really awesome uh, artwork for the Hyakushiki here. Uh, a nice bit of Photoshop work uh, again. Uh, all of the details are on the box as well, whether you can make that out or not. It gives you the model number, height, weight, total weight, uh, what it has, uh, the armaments, what it's made from, etc. etc. And then it goes on to I don't know, I have no idea what that means, but you know, two nice pictures on the side, uh, more of its name, uh, it's number five from the Universal Century High, high grade, or high grade Universal Century line, Ugh, that was a bad way to say it, uh, all of his equipment and special features, if you want to call them that, and uh, another nice picture, uh, again, I really do love the boxes from the Universal Century High grade line, I think the, the artwork on them is fantastic, uh, I mean, I, I I don't really like the this bit here on the mouth. I think that doesn't look great. But you know, that that's one fault, and that's just a bit with the artwork. And the box is going to feel fall over because it's slightly warped. There it goes. Oh well. Uh, so we'll have again a very quick look at its uh, manual. Again, really really good picture of the Yakushiki. Uh, obviously photoshopped. You know, it's like Hasbro and stuff, all painted up, all stick it on because that yeah I'll get onto that in a moment uh, again all the details on the side of it there open it up uh, a really nice shot of the Hyakushiki at a nice angle uh, description of all of its armaments uh, all of its equipment and stuff uh, just giving a quick look at that uh, box art from the front but without the the haze not the haze uh, the desaturation and whatever it was to it uh, another sketch of the Hyakushiki and a lot of little sketches. Again, really nice. And we get on the inside and it's got all the instructions and whatnot, but that's not interesting. Then we have the uh, final look, which is basically a couple of shots of it and the color guide. And that's basically all you need. Uh, I wouldn't even see you need that much. I mean, you need a bit for the, the beam saber, and really that's about it for the color guide. Uh, sorry about hitting the camera there. Uh, that is all the uh, instructions and parts because, like I said, I've already put the Hyakushiki together, so we may as well get on and have a look at that now. Okay, so we're back with the Hyakushiki. Uh, a very nice close up shot of it, and it, as you can see, uh, the head's nice and shiny, but that's not all. As we zoom out, you can see that it is very faithful to its. Um, it's box. It is all chromed, well, you know, excusing the chest. Uh, love the little uh, bits poking through here. This collar as well that goes around the back of the neck is also a nice gold piece as well, so it's not... it doesn't have any grey pieces. All of the extra pieces are gold. Uh, I think there's... I'm gonna say two... no, no more than two. Three or four different types uh, of uh, plastic you see. You've got red, uh, for the top and the arms there, 
and the bottom of the feet, which you'll see later. You got grey for the inside parts, uh, blue for the chest, and silver for the uh, silver. Oh dear, gold, gold for the the body and everything else, basically, which is good at least. Because of its simple color scheme, I don't, I've got a little stain there for some reason. Uh, because of the simple nature of its color scheme, it really works well and lends itself well. E and even though it's simple, it does stand out a hell of a lot because it is this gold shiny color. And you can see me in the in the wing there. Uh, articulation. Uh, what do we have? We have uh, head articulation. Not a lot. Uh, can look up slightly. Uh, look down a lot more. Uh, it twists. I don't like to twist heads all the way around, but it, it, you know, you can get it to all the positions you need it to. Uh, arms have a joint here, so you have to pull this out to that much, and then you can lift the arm out again. Uh, the shoulder. I'm trying to remember all the articulation. It doesn't seem to bend, and I don't really want to force it. It wiggles a little bit. Uh, it's got a joint here, so it can twist. As I try and break it, it's got an elbow joint, which is quite loose compared to the rest of it. Uh, wrist joint, which is wiggle, you know, it can wiggle and stuff. Not a whole lot, because it's it's pegged in, from what I remember. Uh, to get it to have a waist joint, you kind of need to lift up the body a little bit to about there, you know. So there is a, a slight gap, but then you can rotate it. Uh, it's mainly because, as you can see, these blue bits here kind of restrict its movement so if you do want to have waist articulation you need to lift it up slightly and I've just noticed that uh, the uh, bit on the side of his head here is being annoying and coming out slightly that was one of the hardest bits to get in it was a real effort I think I should have should really use glue to uh, keep it in but you know it's fine the way it is it just takes a hell of a lot of pressing to get it in uh, the arm, the, well, this arm's the same. Uh, I'm always worried to move these front skirts, but they do move forwards together. Uh, the side skirts, I'll show this, are really don't move that far. They move about that far, uh, so you can get the leg out. To, it, it's not like the leg can move that far anyway on its own. It can go like that. Uh, and you need to be careful with these side skirts, because they will pop off if you try and move them too much. Uh, that's a really nice reflection for me. Well, you know, it shows how shiny it is. Uh, knees bend there, and I think they bend again. Let's see. They have a slight bit of movement at the top of the knee and lots at the bottom, so you can get a really good bent knee there. I love the, the wires coming out of the back of the knees. Uh, it, it really rounds them out, and it's not like, hey, just plastic extensions of the knees. Uh, then we move on to the feet, uh, which are on a ball joint, uh, so they wiggle, they don't really twist, they barely twist, they do have a little twist to them, uh, and they go down, but the really nice thing is, as you can see, it's got an extra piece here to, so when it moves down, it's still covered up, which I, I think is really nice, a, a nice bit of engineering there, uh, you know, for a model kit. Also, I, I like all these extra pieces on the side for the thrusters and stuff. I did get these pieces the wrong way around, but I sorted that out by just swapping the legs around, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, oh yeah, before I forget, these wings, uh, I can't remember what they're for, but they make it look nice. They are on a ball joint, but the ball joint's a bit stiff, so they can move slightly, but you know, you don't really want them to. And they also have a joint here, so you can fiddle around with these bottom parts as well, if you like. So, that is the general articulation. Uh, let's see if I can find the rest of the pieces, because I know I've not got one out. No, I've misplaced one of them at the moment. Uh, it's not important. The, other, the only other piece that I don't have with me that I'm frantically searching for... Oh no, here it is. Uh, I'll start off with this because it's the most boring, sorry about the dullness of the camera. It's an extra hand. Only one though. It's a closed fist, uh, like this hand, I'm not going to say the right or the left because, you know, you could argue either way. Uh, well, at the moment I've got his, his trigger hand in uh, for this hand so he can hold his gun. Uh, and this one to hold his beam saber. That's essentially what they're both for, so push that hand in because I think it's coming out. Uh, so, he comes with a hand. Uh, he comes with his beam rifle, 
Uh, yeah, it's a beam rifle, I think. Uh, it's not like, unfortunately, the O's. I would have liked it if they had a, a wire that you could have put through here. You have to colour this yourself, unfortunately. But it's not bad. It's a. It, I, I'd like to say it's a unique looking beam rifle, but I don't know. Beam rifles kind of just look like beam rifles. And you, the good thing is you don't even need to pull off this part of the hand as he falls over. Brilliant. Uh, you can just kind of slot it, slot it in, which is good, because uh, the hands work the same uh, as the O's. You pull off the top part of the hand and then push it back in, uh, which I, I'm not a giant fan of. Uh, he also comes with uh, only one beam saber. Uh, now, the Hyakushiki does have two. Uh, th this is one molded beam saber, by the way. That's why the handle is also clear. Doesn't it's not a huge deal, but you know the the problem I have is the Hyakushiki really is meant to have two, as the back skirt here holds uh, two handles for the beam saber here, uh, which you can pull out. They don't really stick, as the uh, the instructions say that they should be about that height. But as you can see, one doesn't stay. Again, doesn't matter too much. Uh, but I, I really would have liked it if they'd put in at least two beam sabers, because I, I think he needs two, really, uh, for his Yaku shikiness. Uh, but, but I do like the beam saber a lot, it really lends itself. Uh, and he also has his, oh, I'll need to look at the instructions because I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Clay bazooka. It shoots clay pigeons. It doesn't, but, you know, we, we'll go with it. Shoots clay pigeons at people. Um, Kind of small barreled, and then it's got this huge bit for the ammo at the back. It's actually quite thin as well. It's a really thin looking bazooka. Uh, now you may be wondering why it has two handles. It doesn't have two handles. This bit's the bottom handle. Uh, and, good thing is, th this is one of the good things about the Hyakushiki. You can store all of its bits on it, bar the extra hand. Uh, on the top here, if I can get the angle right and the lighting right. Yeah, you can see right there just where my finger is covering a shadow there's a little hole you can with a bit of well you don't even have to really force it in you can hook it round and uh, just put it on the back of your shoulder or you can put it if you like on the other shoulder which is great so it's easy access for him uh, I, I really like that I'm, I'm glad that you can store all of its stuff on it uh, it means that you don't need to worry about hey where am I gonna put this stupidly huge bazooka you can say hey just shove it on its back uh, which is good. It it doesn't look great from this angle because it's like so far away and there's so much white space here. Uh, but it, it is quite nice, uh, and it it kind of rounds the figure out. Uh, you may be asking yourself as well, where are the symbols on his shoulders? Well, they are in my hand at the moment. Uh, they're on one of these. Uh, I don't really know uh, how you do this. I think you need water or something. You need to do cutting and praying and stuff. Uh, and I don't really want to ruin the Hyakushiki, uh, so I haven't put them on yet, because if I ruined it, I would kind of be quite upset, because I, I really like the Hyakushiki. Um, one sticker, literally one sticker, which is awesome. It's just, you can see the black in his eyes there. That is essentially the only sticker you get, bar these. That's it, which I, I think is awesome, especially for me, who always kind of fears putting on stickers. Uh, you know, just in case something goes horribly, horribly wrong, uh, as things tend to do. Uh, so yes, that is all I can say about the Hyakushiki. It's a great model. Uh, it looks awesome on any shelf if you're a robot fan. Uh, and if you think I'm going to start a character-based review on Lieutenant Quattro or Shah Asnable, you're joking. There's far too much to cover. I'd be doing another huge video if I was uh, talking about uh, Ch Shah. Uh, so if I do start doing the characters, which again, if you want to hear me talk about the characters that pilot these, or the the models, some, not the models, the, the actual robots and what they do in the series, again, please tell me, but I'm not going to start on Shah, because Shah is ridiculous for how much he's in the Gundam series. Before I go, I thought I should just do a very quick size comparison, uh, as people love to see them. Uh, the O is a 144 scale from the Universal Higher Century line, and is towering over the uh, the Hyakushiki, and, you know, is a lot wider as well. And uh, the Zaku-2, or Shah's Zaku-2, uh, piloted by Shah, or Lieutenant Quattro. Spoilers! Uh, also, a little bit panel-lined. 
It looks actually a lot better panel lined here than it does in real life. Either way, again, this is from the uh, 1 to 144 scale high grade, and he's a hell of a lot smaller. So I'd say the Hyakushiki is probably about your average sized uh, model, I'd assume. Uh, but then again, I could be wrong. Uh, just to give you some idea of scale and to show you how big the O is, and he's massive. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching my review. Uh, again, if you think I can improve some way on how I do these, please, I, I would love the feedback. Uh, I hope the video flickering issue is now sorted and dead. Uh, until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you for another review in the future.